Hi everybody, welcome to a new series of tutorials on Bliss Motion EQ. Yes, another fantastic app from Bliss and all the apps from Bliss are really unique. I have a number of codes to give away courtesy of Bliss, so if you'd like to participate to the competition, so just uh, check the instructions on the video description and also check uh, on the comments section, the top comment, if the uh, competition is still uh, active. So let's start. I'm inside AUM, so let's create uh, an audio channel and let's select uh, as an input a file player. Let's choose a file to play, something that one of our subscriber uh, Ian has sent us. Let's set it as a loop and let's play to listen to, to what uh, it is about. <laughs> Okay, that sounds nice. Now let's add uh, uh, Bliss Motion EQ as an effect. So here it is. So let's open it and uh, maximize the interface. As you can see, standard interface from Bliss, you will have a typical LFO uh, on the left hand side, but also on the right hand side. So we have two LFOs with the usual controls for sync with the Austin, the rate in terms of quickly the LFO is. Um, is oscillating your target, which can be uh, frequency gains, all the other oscillator as well, the type of shape for the oscillator. You can set up the offset, stereo, and also the amount. And the same option, you have them also on LF or B. In the middle, this is quite unique. You have a free bands EQ. You can decide to, how to move the frequency um, of um, in the middle, so you can define where low and mid uh, starts in the same mid and high in terms of frequency. Then you can uh, add gain for each of the three bands, like so. You can mute, of course, each of the bands. And very unique, you can decide the output bus for that particular band. So for example, you can say uh, low frequency will go to output uh, bus number one, the mid to number two, and the high to number three. So that's an example. Of course, you have a set of presets here. You click on default and you can choose a number of those typical interface from Billis. And you also, you also have a dice button here, which allows you to change uh, the settings um, in a random way um, so that you can create unique presets, I suppose. So let's, let's play a little bit with some of the different presets. Let's try this one, bass boost. Oh, this one, bass only. Left and right. And of course, this takes advantage of the stereo settings, which you can have on both LFOs. Let's try a couple of others. This one left for a long time, then right. Let's try this one. And this one, you can see it's using a low rate on LFO A and a fast one on LFOB, that is why it moves from the right and then to the left. Now, let's go back to uh, the default preset and let's see how, for example, we can take advantage of different output bus, which is really great. So let's set low frequency to go on output bus one, the medium frequency to output bus two and the high frequency to output bus three. Okay, perfect. And now let's create uh, two, actually three more audio channel. On the uh, second one, we choose a multi-bus audio unit instance so that we capture uh, the media frequency. We do the same on the third uh, audio channel where we capture the high frequency. And what we do on the fourth uh, channel, we just uh, set it as an input to receive from mix bus A. And then we change the output of the other channel to go to uh, bus A as well. 
And the reason I'm doing this is because then I can control the volume directly from the audio channel number four. Okay, now <clears throat> let's um, um, mute uh, the second or third channel and let's play. So you hear, of course, only the low frequency. So if we unmute the second channel and mute the first channel, you hear only the medium frequency or the middle frequency. And of course, if we mute the second channel and mute the third one, you hear the high frequencies. Okay, so uh, now what, for example, we could do is uh, add, of course, effects. You could add, for example, a chorus or a delay to different channels. And you'll have different, of course, effects based on the frequencies that that channel is receiving. Or something more interesting, for example, which I wanted to show you. So if, uh, for example, we add um, Gauss as an effect, and we do that for both three channels. to the second and now also to the third channel like so okay perfect now let's open the first the Gauss instance and here let's set the loop to around the 16th in terms of seconds now let's go back to the beginning and let's press play and record at the same time oops that's not what we wanted, so let's erase, go back to the beginning. Back to the beginning and try again. Oops, uh, the length needs to be 16 seconds we said, so let's try again. I think that will cover the length of uh, the uh, the waveform being played. Okay, and we are recording now for 16 seconds, and this will record, of course, only the low frequencies. Almost that, 14, 15, 16. Okay, let's stop that from playing. Let's do the same on the second instance of Gauss. So we set these to uh, 16, roughly a second in length. We stop playing, go back to the beginning and play and record at the same time. And this, of course, will record the mid frequencies, which are coming out from the motion EQ, uh, which is receiving input from that file player. Okay, almost there. Nice. Now we are hearing mid, medium frequency or mid frequencies. Now let's try with the higher frequencies as well. So we set again 16 seconds. Stop, go back to the beginning, play and record at the same time. And this will record the higher frequencies. And of course, I started recording at different times. So uh, that will mean that we'll play a different uh, note in sync, which is exactly the effect I want to receive. Okay, so now let's pause this and we can get rid of the file player because we don't really need it anymore. And to some extent, we can also get rid of the motion EQ, but let's leave it there for now. So let's play the three instances together. And of course, you can stop here, but the beauty of having recorded different uh, frequencies is now that using a tool like Gauss, you can, for example, apply sequences or effects to each individual recording. So let's try and see what we can achieve. <laughs> Let's try uh, on this instance, we added a bit of delay. Let's increase the volume. Let's activate the sequencer, give you more decay. 
and I have stuff in number 2 and 4 to go to change speed. Perhaps a little bit... Um, less uh, delay amount would actually help. Okay, let's solo the medium frequencies. Let's activate the trigger. More decay. Really nice, and let's try to do something similar with the lower frequencies. Really nice, and then of course you can continue like so, so for example you could add a reverb, why not, another bliss effect. So as you can see you have a lot of possibilities um, on what you can do with the recording in the output from uh, the motion sequences. I think it's a fantastic app. Um, the LFOs gives that of course uh, a nice touch in terms of changing frequencies and gains of the three bands and of course the redirecting output of each of the three bands helps you to achieve unique outputs which then you can manipulate further like in this case we use Gauss to obtain a nice effect. I hope you enjoyed, see you next time, bye!